Hello friends and welcome to Plugin India channel. Uh, we are back with an episode of EV Guru where we go in depth into the details of electric vehicle related stuff. And today we have a special treat for you. Uh, we uh, recently uh, we did a little bit on the Plugin India show about the Tesla battery day and that has us totally psyched. Uh, the battery day event had many insights for us and we did promise you that we'll get a little bit in depth Uh, about the battery technology that was revealed and here it is now for you guys uh, the pace of innovation at tesla makes us dizzy we feel this is the one company that can actually do something to help us live a more sustainable life on this planet this episode of ev guru we have with us mr akshay gill who is the founder of makermax and akshay was also a battery engineer at tesla from 2015 to 2018 so welcome to the show akshay thanks for having me here rafe yes akshay and uh, uh, just a little bit about yourself how did I've, you get into uh, battery technology yeah yeah so i've actually been in the electric vehicle space since 2010 before it right. gained so much steam uh started working <laughs> first on electric scooters that's where i started and then i did my masters uh, specialization in battery technology that got me interested specifically in batteries um and uh, that's kind of that was my segue into into tesla for 3 years where i worked both on the hardware and the firmware sides in the battery teams uh, there and i saw the company grow from uh, like a, a few number of people to quite a large number of people in the time that i spent there so it was quite a unique experience um and then uh, i took that um, from there to kind of uh, i noticed everywhere actually from from the start from 2010 Uh, throughout my time that there was a huge need to get uh, everyone up to speed with the technology aspects of EVs and which is why uh, I founded Makermax and uh, in Makermax we've been creating products and courses for uh, electric vehicles and battery technology so we train uh, students as well as professionals uh, all around the world in the in, in these aspects right actually that sounds very interesting how you got to Makermax So Akshay, the battery day event totally blew our minds. Uh, the improvements in cell design, the manufacturing, and the new innovations that Tesla has brought about, especially uh, the use of new anode materials, the elimination of cobalt, and using nickel and iron in the cathode. Who have experience working with Tesla cells, and uh, we are very keen to know what are your takeaways uh, from this event. Yeah, uh, same here, Rafi. Uh, I had a really interesting time uh, watching the event live. I mean, I was waiting for the event for. Uh, I don't know how many months, and finally happened. It was almost a dream come uh, true for me. Um, and I mean, I've I've seen Tesla when I was working there. Uh, they were they totally innovated the electric car. They made it mass market. Um, uh, they they got that done. And after that, they took on the challenge of manufacturing and making sure that uh, they're able to uh, mass manufacture uh, those electric cars and get it out to the world in large numbers. Uh, and the next challenge that they took up now uh, was how do we convert the uh, giga factories into tera factories they soon realized that the um, uh, the way the electric vehicle demand was growing that the giga factories would not be uh, uh, would not be enough to support that so they needed tera factories and they the innovations that were shared at the event were all about how do we get these tera factories to work in the same footprint uh, that was initially designed for the giga factory so Right, so it was uh, completely a kind of groundbreaking uh, stuff that was shared. Uh, I don't even think a lot of companies were thinking that way uh, at all. So it was, um, and and you know, like just sharing these developments with the public itself, it keeps you in tune uh, with what the company is doing, keeps you connected with the company. Um, and so, yeah, I, I had a super like enjoyable time watching it, and then studying uh, the event. I, I I watched that video, I think five five to six times to. fully grasped everything that was taught uh, that was like talked about there was like things that were mentioned very quickly but when you re really look at that uh, those uh, that video and really listen to what they're saying uh, it, it it kind of shows the uh, the extent of innovation that's happening uh, right now at tesla that's true that event that whatever they said was totally packed with information uh, all right let's uh, talk a little bit about the battery cells themselves Uh, Tesla uh, has unveiled its new 4680 cell, which is much larger than the 2170 cell. Now they claim that this has six times more power and five times more energy density than the previous cells. They seem to have solved the thermal management issue. Uh, the, it seems that the bigger cell is not getting hot anymore. When you have a cell of this size, it, it tends to get much hotter than a smaller cell. What are your thoughts on this new cell design? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, so they uh, have moved from uh, an 18650 to a 2170 and now to a 4680 design. And uh, for the viewers there uh, here for right. this video, like this is basically the cell dimension that they were talking about, right? So 18 millimeters by 60, uh, then became 21 by uh, millimeters diameter by uh, 70, 70 in, uh, in, in length. And now has become 46 uh, uh, in diameter and 80 in length, right? So uh, like you uh, rightly said, uh, this move from 2170 to 4680 uh, was not possible without the uh, the innovation uh, shared. And more specifically, the tabless electrode uh, uh, patent that uh, that Tesla had filed last year. And that uh, what, what that allowed them to do is basically, if you think of uh, the cell as a, like in the cylinder, there's uh, there's the electrodes that are wrapped around like in a cylindrical shape, right? But the exit points, like I actually have a cell here. So the exit points to the uh, the positive and the negative terminal uh, to get the uh, the electrons out of the uh, electrodes out to the cell casing. There's there's uh, two tabs: one that connects to the negative, one that connects to the to the positive side, right? And those act like uh, those act like roadblocks, uh, pretty much, or, or um, bottlenecks for the electrons, right? So they by removing those and uh, uh, through through that innovation, they have many points that connect from those electrodes to the cell caps. So there's many exit and entry points for electrons to get in and out of the cell. Thus, uh, with, with that, they, they were able to reduce the internal resistance, first of all, and having less internal resistance means less heat is generated inside the cell. So with that, that's kind of how they are able to now get to this higher um, or larger cell size, which offers higher energy density, which was not possible without these innovations that were, uh, that, that were not there before. Akshay, it, it seems to me that this particular technology is more on the physical level and uh, agnostic of the chemistry of the battery. Would this also apply to uh, LFP cells or other chemistries as well? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, this uh, innovation is more for cylindrical cells. Uh, it doesn't matter what type uh, of chemistry. So when we're talking about chemistry of a cell, what's really changing inside the cell is the cathode active material, right? So uh, there's, if you think about the cathode being an electrode metal sheet, uh, there's there's a layer of active material that is uh, that's layered on top of that. That the chemistry of that is what's changing, but the rest of the construction of the cell uh, remains uh, pretty similar for between different chemistries. So this innovation that was shared was mostly for cylindrical cells. So if you have uh, a prismatic cell or uh, or um, you know a pouch type cell, then this may or may not apply. So they, they specifically were talking about cylindrical cells here. All right. Uh, one more question about the size uh, of the cell, uh, Akshay. Uh, we know that Tesla prefers cylindrical cells, but you could also have a prismatic and pouched uh, shaped cells. So uh, when would you use these various different sizes? I mean, the different shapes of batteries. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I mean, uh, there's distinct advantages to the, uh, these uh, types of what I call form factors of the cell. Um, mm -hmm. So with cylindrical and prismatic, you're dealing with a hard casing, right? Both of these have a harder casing uh, around the cell. So which means there's some inherent safety already in the, uh, on a cell level. So if there's an impact to the, uh, to the pack on a cell level, there's extra protection before there's a protrusion into the active layers uh, of the cell. So this is where the uh, kind of advantage, one of the advantages I would say uh, uh, when a, a team is looking at choosing which type of form factor, uh, and they look at that, but the downfall of choosing a cylindrical or a prismatic cell in that in that same re regard, as opposed to a pouch, uh, is that that extra casing adds weight, right? So your energy density is reducing by that small amount of the weight of the casing. So a pouch type cell would be chosen in a, an application that is uh, that needs the least amount of weight, that needs a lot of weight reduction. But then it's up to the uh, product developer to make sure that there is enough protection provided from the outside of the case to make sure that any protrusion to the product does not uh, does not affect um, or, or does not reach the battery, right? So uh, those are some some of the some of the advantages and disadvantages. One of the things about cylindrical cells is because uh, because they are usually construction wise smaller uh, than prismatic cells. When you see prismatic cells, they are bulkier. Um, so depending on the vehicle type that you have, you have more, uh, more room for, uh, 
kind of being creative with the type of shape of the pack uh, and, and those kinds of things when you're using cylindrical. And it's also easier to run cooling uh, tubes and those kinds of things uh, in cylindrical design. So th those are some of the inherent uh, advantages uh, of one type of form cylindrical. factor or the other. But I wouldn't call one uh, or the other a, a clear winner. You know, it depends on the application uh, that you are that you've chosen. So there's no need to uh, copy a competitor uh, as as uh, for, specifically for for the form factor. It's about what type of battery supply can you get? What type of uh, can the supplier provide that type of battery, uh, that type of form factor at the right price? And what are the inherent safety advantages that you're getting with choosing that specific form factor? Those are some of the considerations I would take. And from a Tesla perspective, you you kind of think of that from a uh, from a ground up perspective for your application, instead of saying that okay Tesla is doing it, so let's let's do it as well. So Elon also spoke about using only silicon in the anode and eliminating graphite altogether. Why is this so important? Yeah, so uh, graphite actually has been used as an anode material for a while uh, in lithium ion, uh, and uh, the reason is that uh, you know it it offers a very um, stable structure. And both the anode and the cathode have to offer that uh, stable stable structure for the lithium ions to go back and forth between them. And when I say stable structure, what happens is when a lithium ion goes and sits inside the structure of a cathode or an anode, um, the the structure should not mechanically or chemically change, right? It should it, sh it should be so it it should be it should offer that uh, stability. And that's what graphite offers, but kind of the downside uh, is that it's you're not able to get as high of an energy density with graphite-based anodes, right? So that's where uh, uh, the industry started leaning a little bit towards silicon. But the problem with silicon till now has always been that um, uh, it 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 basically uh, it, when lithium ions sit and intercalate with silicon, the silicon anode has a tendency tendency tends in, tendency to expand, energy. right? So it has a tendency to expand uh, to sometimes even as they mentioned in the presentation, it can expand up to four times its size. Now what's what's happening there is, um, I think Elon mentioned in the presentation as well, it's like a cookie crumbling and getting gooey, mm -hmm. right? So what he's meaning when he's saying that is that uh, sometimes when silicon expands with integrated lithium, that silicon anode is disintegrating and falling into the electrolyte. That's how it's getting getting gooey, and so that's what you don't want uh, don't want to happen, right? So you want this anode to be a structure that's that's stable, and so the way uh, the industry has been trying to at, uh, attack this problem so far is they've been treating this as an issue. They've been treating okay, silicon expands. It's a problem. Let's try to solve it. And so they've been trying to dope silicon. Uh, they've tried they've tried to create silicon nanostructures to make sure that it's, it's the expansion is reduced as much as possible. Um, but what Tesla has done is completely kind of unheard, unheard of and revolutionary, at least from my uh, perspective, I have not heard of this uh, before. And what they have portrayed in the presentation is that they, they were able to take the uh, metallic silicon as the anode structure. And instead of taking its expansion properties as a, um, uh, you know, as a problem, they've taken it as what it is. You just accept that it is going to do that. And what they are proposing is they, they around that uh, around the silicon atoms, they have some sort of a binding material, so that the whole structure, silicon and that binding material, is uh, is kind of um, adhesive, right? So it, it, I mean, the 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 binding material is like keeping the keeping the silicon atoms together. So it allows a certain amount of stretching to happen but still keeps the full structure intact. So when the lithium ions are intercalating and the silicon atoms are uh, uh, expanding, the whole anode structure doesn't fall apart. It allows some room of, for expansion uh, and then comes back to its original size when the lithium ions leave. So they've kind of worked with the properties of silicon and uh, the, uh, the benefits are that silicon is super abundantly available uh, so it's a uh, very low cost and it offers high energy density and they've tried and they've kind of made this disadvantage into uh, just something that they work with. And, and it, again, I found it completely amazing, uh, this, this part of the presentation and the innovation shared here. Wow. Yes, that was uh, <laughs> very illuminating, especially about how they're building uh, nanostructures with silicon. Uh, uh, we've uh, actually really loved the analogy that they've given about uh, using uh, uh, the cathode uh, being a bookshelf. 
and that's what you spoke about in india especially we have uh, a lot of lfp chemistry batteries uh, mainly in electric scooters and i've been using an electric car for the past 7 years and that also has an lfp chemistry and it's been doing pretty well the batteries are performing great lfp chemistry does well for uh, hot temperatures what do you think about tesla's idea about of uh, simplifying the cathode manufacturing process actually yeah so they actually shared uh, quite a quite a lot of information in that small amount of time for cathode um and uh, the one of the things that they were mentioning is on the metal side i think you were mentioning the different chemistries right so they were talking about three different metals that they're looking at into the future iron nickel and cobalt uh, and for a long time the effort has been to reduce the amount of uh, consumption of cobalt in in cells uh, the reason being it's it's costly and it also is not uh, it's it's not sustainable to uh, the mining of cobalt is not sustainable so you want to try to reduce the consumption of that and a lot of different uh battery manufacturers including tesla have been trying for many years and they've they have every year been making progress and looks like into the future they're looking at completely elim- eliminating cobalt uh, from the cells which is which is which is great uh, they're moving towards more use of uh, nickel and sometimes nickel manganese or sometimes uh, uh the iron uh, iron metal also being used in their chemistries right so they talked about these different um right Me- metals and the advantages uh, and how which type of application uh, can suit for for super long range you want uh, a fully nickel uh, based chemistries and there is innovation uh, in, in that as well right so uh, like you were saying the anal- uh, analogy of a uh, bookshelf uh, they had also mentioned in the presentation that uh, uh, this cobalt is used uh, or preferred or at least was preferred because of it being a very stable bookshelf um but they're trying uh, through di- uh, through different uh, ways to try to make nickel uh, a, a similar type of uh, stability in terms of the in terms of in terms of the cathode bookshelf and the second thing uh, that you are uh, talking about the production process is a completely different area that uh, a lot of uh, i would say battery companies have um they just done the way things have been working for many many years and they've kind of just uh, continue doing that no one has sat down and questioned uh, why certain things are done it's like a one process is uh, has been you know working for many years let's just continue doing that so tesla kind of sat down and thought about how do we make um, how do we make the cobalt mm-hmm. pr- production process also uh, less footprint uh, how do we reduce the footprint of that and how do we reduce the cost of that and that's where some of the in- inventions that they were talking about the sulfate free processes um that they were talking about is basically allowing them to go faster from the metal ores uh, to the cathode material there is some sort of, there's some amount of processing that happens to the metal ore uh to fo- form the cathode material which then goes into inside your cell so they've simplified that process by removing uh, some intermediate layers that they were talking about one of them was this uh, conversion of metal into sulfates uh, they they removed that and few others and with that they been able to uh, kind of remove wastages water wastage and a lot of uh, material wastage as well during the manufacturing process of the cathode so that's that that also has been a uh, quite revolutionary in the, on the cathode side right uh, uh, talking about sourcing of these minerals um, also i suppose they are uh, keen at, to get rid of cobalt because uh, sometimes it's not ethically sourced either and uh, also uh, talking about sustainable uh, mineral extraction uh it was really awesome what they said uh, apparently they purchased 10000 acres of land in nevada which has lithium clay deposit and they are going to be putting in salt and water and the uh, salt comes out with the lithium and they put the rest of the clay back into the soil so uh, you know they're not harming the uh, uh, land as either to the fossil fuel pro- propaganda that is going on that there is very little lithium in the earth, uh, in the world you know yeah uh, uh, rafai i'm a full supporter of evs and i definitely feel after all these inventions that have been shared that this is kind of we're looking at the last breath for ice automobiles okay. um and uh, and with the with the lithium being in a short supply definitely not lithium is existing in a uh, different forms right in brine in in a solid form uh, as well right so it, it's about how much there's two kind of parts to the problem right one is finding these uh, finding these lithium mines and uh, a lot of them have been found in australia and chile uh, there there have been huge uh, deposits and like they were mentioning uh, 
a lot of that in this uh, they, they were able to find locally in the states yeah. as well um so one of them is yeah finding the mines which there, there seems to be currently no shortage of uh, and second is how do we get lithium out of those mines um in, into a um, the metallic structure that they need for uh, for for using in in, in the cells so from, from 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 my perspective i don't see that as a as a bottleneck uh, going forward and the bottleneck that i saw on the metallic side was uh, the use of use of cobalt which the industry is already working on and 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 lo- looks like they're completely going to eliminate that into the future so uh, that kind of uh, removes my concern on any any type of metal uh, deficiency deficiency that we would have for making evs uh, kind of a worldwide success that's right uh, okay and then finally they spoke about recycling which kind of completes the sustainability cycle uh, and that the dependence on mining will be re- reduced he even said that uh, when there are enough cars on the road all the lithium would be able to uh, we would be able to recycle all the lithium from the batteries itself and would be minimum minimum of mining required uh, do you know any companies which are already recycling lithium batteries or can you recover all of the lithium and the nickel uh, from say a 10 or 12 year old battery yeah uh, this is a super interesting area and, and it's just picking up now you know like uh, it also mentioned in the presentation uh, recycling is running about 10 years behind the uh, the production of electric cars and rightly so because uh, there are not enough electric cars on the road for batteries to be recycled right now right they haven't reached their end of life the batteries inside those cars haven't reached their end of life um but yeah super interesting field uh, for for research um specifically for the electric industry uh, electric vehicle industry and one thing kind of on on the question of um, the what can we get out of the pack after 10 to 12 years right so if you look at an ice automobile uh, there is exhaust gases right that's there, there is fuel that's being burnt and it's leaving uh, out from the exhaust pipes as carbon dioxide so there is mass that is actually going out of the vehicle and we're losing fuel in one way or the other right so in in an electric vehicle it's a closed loop system right anything that was there inside the car when the car was manufactured left the manufacturing line is still there in the car from 10 to 15 years from now nothing's nothing's really left the car right even uh, some confusion around charging when you when you're charging uh, the uh, electric vehicle it's only the flow the charge is only facilitating the flow of electrons back to one electrode uh, to the other right so it's not really uh there isn't any material uh, that that is that is leaving the uh, uh the vehicle so in at the end of life you still have the metals that you started with the difference is that you those metals are now uh you know so, so, some part of the metals will be available in the raw format uh, as as how they started but some of them will be mechanically altered like the bookshelf structure uh might be uh might not be uh, stable anymore and uh, they might some of them might have chemically reacted with the electrolyte uh, to form some sort of uh, uh, other materials right so the challenge for this industry for the recycling industry is how do we bring those um, bring those kind of materials back to their or- original form and so which right. i feel is a very doable challenge um, and something that i was super excited to hear i'm super excited to kind of uh even work on uh, in in the future um where uh, the reduction of the um the use of mi- mining yeah. And, yeah new uh, mining of new ores uh if we can bring it to a place where uh, the old uh, the old uh, vehicles that are going offline they're able to supply enough material to to the new uh, to the new cars with supplements little bit supplement from the mines that would be uh, an amazing place to be for for the sustainability future and and in terms of um, uh, uh, companies working in this area i the one that comes to mind uh, for my for, forefront of my mind is uh, redwood materials that was uh, started by the ex cto of tesla uh, jb strobel who is working on ceo and co-founder uh, of that right. uh, of that company and they're doing excellent work in the recycling area and they already have multiple partnerships with battery companies uh, to get uh, the end of life batteries back to usable form and even in some cases uh, reduce the uh, reduce the wastages that happen on the manufacturing uh, lines for battery production so super interesting work that they're doing so akshay thank you so much for sharing all of this with us it's absolutely mind blowing 
to see how much innovation is happening at tesla and uh, as far as electric vehicles and battery technology is concerned around the world uh, these guys are actually taking every step of the process and making it as efficient as possible they are rethinking everything and they are not afraid to do things a new uh, they are not just trying to follow what's been going being done all these years so that's something that's refreshing uh, we have a last few questions for you akshay before we can let you go and uh, well elon musk recently tweeted that tesla will be coming to india by 2021 now this has got everybody all excited and people are uh, shooting out messages on social media and there are news articles coming in everywhere and all sorts of implications are being drawn up for how the supercharger network will be set up in india and who will be the one to do it and uh, do you have any insider information for, for us on this uh, akshay <laughs> there's another thing to yeah. mention actually um, here that uh, elon also tweeted in uh, 2019 that one of the reasons that they weren't able to uh, make it in india back then was the high uh, tariffs in terms of uh, duties and uh, taxes and uh, th- their vehicles were taxed uh, being taxed at that point at least uh, at about 100% yeah. Uh, yeah yeah or even more yeah so that that was one of the things because their their whole mission has been how do we make the cost less for electric vehicles and if there's so much tax on it then it kind of makes no sense to enter that market so they've been kind of uh, th- that's one of the reasons that they've been uh, delaying it so hopefully now they have a resolution on that there was some uh, talk uh, at this point looks like rumor and I'm, i'm not sure if it's uh, confirmed or not but talks of opening some sort of a center in in bangalore itself uh, which which might also help them to bring these cars on a, on the road uh you know at a more affordable price for the local market yes uh, that's what we were going to ask you next is uh, how how do you think uh, all these advances in battery technology are going to affect uh, the price of the car itself do you think that we might uh, have a say a 15 lakh rupee which is about 20000 dollars uh, tesla model 2 for for instance in india by 2025 Right actually the model 2 name is not confirmed uh, okay. it, I think it's just mostly a rumor uh, yeah. uh, but but uh, the uh, they they're definitely heading in the direction uh, of the price reduction Elon had mentioned even in the in the in the battery day presentation that he's still not convinced that the full uh, f- fully affordable car is is there yet uh, it, uh, even talking about the model 3 he he wants to take uh, take it to the next uh, kind of level as well to to really get full adoption of electric vehicles and uh, they had quoted a $25,000 car uh, on the US front um, now how that translates to uh, the indian market i'm definitely sure that the company will do everything possible to um, to make sure that there is a car available for india uh, for the local market at the price point that um, that that allows for mass adoption because in the end uh, the company's mission sole mission from the start has been how to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy uh, and we have seen that they're breaking down all barriers to make sure that that happens so i'm sure that they'll do, they'll do the same in india as well so right friends i hope you enjoyed uh, listening to akshay and uh, as much as we have we are totally thrilled by what he's told us and uh, he also has a website that goes by the name of makermax.ca and there are lots of interesting things about iot and uh, circuits and arduinos and all uh, sorts of tech that relates to batteries evs and other things electronics are put up also check out all the ev themed courses on the maker max website uh, the url to the site is given down below thank you guys so much for watching and thank you very much akshay for sharing your insights we really enjoyed this conversation with you same here thank you so much for having me uh, and i've uh, really enjoyed uh, seeing plugin india you know progress since the years and i'm happy to see uh, the uh, positive uh, kind of thing that they're bringing to the ev field it's very much needed and i'm happy that i could uh, be here and be a part of it thanks akshay thanks a lot